and later succumbed to these injuries on the 31st of October 2019. There has been no investigation or proceed in this matter.
police and detention presses a lot of lies by law. Unfortunately, for example, here when I talk about this matter, Maseleka was abducted recently by a startup and kept severely tortured in a place that he later identified as Muyami facility. He's just healing from uh, the wounds, but the, the, the scars are still visible. Those who have been able to get out of the torture centers have reported that there are still hundreds of victims there, many of them NUP supporters. Now, the case in point is Masereka, who was recently released from the facility, and author Kakwenza Chirabashaisha, who was held for several weeks in the torture facility in Nigeria. Both mentioned that they, were, that they left many other supporters of NUP at these facilities being subjected to horrendous torture. Madam Chairperson, even when we try to record these victims, it is sometimes difficult because every person who comes will bring a fresh list of the people that they have left there. It will be remembered that in 2019, the Human Rights Committee of Parliament attempted to visit the safe houses and was blocked. In our earlier interaction with this committee on March 31st, we presented a list of some of the abducted supporters. It is unfortunate that we have not seen the report of this committee since then. Right after the election, we were invited to the Human Rights Committee and we gave a detail of some of the people who have been abducted and have now not seen a report or any action being taken. Further, the leader of the opposition in this parliament has also, on several occasions, presented a list of missing persons and other categories of violations, but there has been no serious action from the relevant authorities. As of today, as I speak, these are some of our supporters who are abducted by security authorities and are still missing. Tsibarama John Bosco was picked up from Gayaza Road on 3rd June 2019, and up to now he's missing. Mr. Damulina John was abducted on gunpoint in Chiseka Market on 21st November 2020. Police confirmed that he had been arrested. The High Court issued a habeas corpus order for his release, but up to now he's missing. Madam Chairperson, I've come with the wife. Damila John, uh, 52 years of age, he was picked from uh, Chiseka by armed men, and up to now, no one knows where he is. Babas Moses, aka yeah. Kawaja, was picked up from Chiseka on 7th December 2020, and Almoso Vicent was affected from Bolivar Market on 1st December 2020, Kwago Martin, the same story as uh, Nalmoso. Zimula Dennis was abducted from a border border stage in Chebando in November 2020. I've not included the, the, names of their, the numbers of their family members, but they are available upon request because I think this is a public judgment. I don't want to endanger their family members by making those contacts open. Remember, Mustafa was abducted from the border stage in Chevalu in November 2020. Michael Semudu was abducted from, from Munaku in Kasumi on the 1st November 2020. Hassan Mubiru abducted from Kawala in November 2020. Mwereza Zagaston abducted in November 2020. Asumba George abducted from Chotera District on 19th January 2021. Together with a group of 18 other NUP supporters who were later dumped in swamps and other areas. Wangolo Shafiq was abducted from Nasa Na Chebano on 3rd December. Muhammad Takanata abducted from Nama Ojolo, Kono District in November 2020 and missing up to now. Sempi Jarida was picked up from Champisi Subcow, the Mkono District in November 2020 and miss, he's missing up to now. Now, these are just a few of those whose contacts we have and we've done some preliminary investigation. Madam Chairperson, in most cases, the family members have even reported police. For example, the family they, they went up to court, got the happiest school bus order, have reported police, have moved everywhere, and police initially was found that they had. In fact, the list which General Selly read of the part been arrested, his name was also mentioned. So after that, we wonder why such people are not produced before courts of law or, or released unconditionally. Um, I, I wish to go to another category of extrajudicial killings. Honorable members, Article 22 1 of our Constitution guarantees the right to life and provides that no person shall be deprived of life intentionally except in execution of the sentence passed in a fair trial by a court of competent jurisdiction to respect criminal matters and confirmed by his appellate court. Unfortunately, many Ugandans continue to live, uh, to lose lives extrajudiciously by security authorities. Ugandans who have been murdered in cold blood for supporting my identifying with NUP are very many. In November 2020, Madam Chairperson, there was a massacre in this country. Emerging out of protests that took place when our president 
Honorable Chagrin was buried and arrested in Buka district. To date, there has been no investigation into this matter, despite repeated demands by us and the international community. The officers who murdered the people of Uganda have not been brought to book. The families of the deceased were promised compensation, but this has not been done. Many of the families of the deceased can no longer afford to take their children to school because the breadwinners uh, were murdered by security agencies. Prior to the events of November, several other Ugandans were killed. Today I've come with a gentleman who lost his brother. Please stand up. He lost his brother in, 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 that, in November 2020. So that's one of the categories that we're talking about. No compensation, no investigation, nothing. Now, prior to the events of November, several other Ugandans were killed for another crime. But they can find good and supporting our party and the proper movement. These include Richard Kenya, who was delivered and run over by a police truck on 24th of 2020. The police claimed that the cameras on that day were not working, even when it was clear from the onlookers that Rita was deliberately targeted because she was putting on a four power shot. Daniel Chaine was shot dead on 25th of February 2020 by one Pfizer proposal, an LDU officer. Even when we secured a video footage clearly showing how this crime was committed, there was no further punishment investigation into the matter. Charles Mutiawe was run over by a police vehicle in Mavia on 18th July 2020, no investigation. Senator Zafra Kalibala, a member of our security team, was run over by a military truck, number 84DF 2382 on 27th December 2020, and today there has been no conclusive investigation in this matter. The National Youth Platform notes and condemns extrajudicial murders of Ugandans who were not necessarily related to NUP, but who were killed extrajudiciously, and these include Isaac Senyange, commonly known as Zebra Mando, who was shot dead by security operatives. Despite by the admission by the state of his murder, there has been no accountability for this crime. The continued killing of Muslim clerics, very recently Sheikh Abbas Shirebu, who was shot dead on handcuffs, is of great concern to us. At least 12 terror suspects were killed in investigations, including cases where on Lucas clearly stated that the victims were unarmed or even not resisting or evading arrests. It will also be remembered, Madam Chairperson and members, that during the enforcement of COVID 19 regulations in 2020, several Ugandans were murdered in cold blood, and today there has been no conclusive investigation. These include Eric Mutasiga, Ed Chia, in Kono, who was shot by the police. Then on the cemetery, a lady in Kasese who was shot dead by a PDF soldier, Margaret Nanyunga, an 80 year old woman who died after an LDU personnel raided her home in Chengela town, Wilbur Kauno, a resident of Daka, who was shot dead by the police, Robert Senyonga, a border rider in Njemu, who succumbed to wounds at the heads of LDU personnel, Ibrahim Namulondo, Charles Sanga, Vincent Serudi, and others who were killed during the enforcement of COVID regulations. Now, what concerns us is the unwillingness or inability of state agencies to carry out investigations and bring culprits to book. The third issue, Madam Chair, is the military trial of civilians. The trial of civilians in military courts is illegal and unconstitutional. It goes against the constitutional guarantee in 20, Article 28 of our constitution for every Ugandan to be subjected to a fair, speedy, and public hearing before an independent and impartial court or tribunal established by law. It also goes against Uganda's international human rights obligations, and the United Nations Human Rights Council has taken the view that the practice of trying civilians in military courts is not compatible with obligations under the International Covenant on Civil and Political Rights, uh, specifically Article 14, and Uganda has ratified the ICCPR. In several of its observations and recommendations to countries, the Human Rights Committee has taken the general view that the jurisdiction of military courts should be confined military offenses committed by military personnel. Since November 2020, many NUP supporters have been subjected to military trials even when they are civilian. The charges have been largely trumped up. The motivation has been to hold these Ugandans for longer periods without availing them an opportunity to apply for bail in civilian courts. It is well known that military courts in Uganda are under the command and control of EPDF command structure. It is not possible for accused persons, more so prisoners of conscience, conscious to get a free and fair trial from those courts. Moreover, most NUP supporters found themselves in military courts for allegedly putting on red berets. In most cases, as I can testify before this committee, after the abduction, they would be forced to put on berets 
or even will be informed and their pictures taken. Then they will be arraigned before the unit disciplinary committee before being transferred to the division of martial at Kachini or the division of martial at Makiye. Madam Chair, I think I need to explain this. Most of the, our people who are abducted, they will just find people in houses, take them to military courts, force them to put on military uniforms, take their pictures, and subject them to military trials. In the most bizarre case, 49 of our supporters were kicked off the campaign trail on December 30, 2020, charged before the military court of being found in possession of four bullets and two magazines on 3rd of January. You can imagine, they were arrested on 30th December and then they charged it right, but they were found with magazines on 3rd of January. They would spend close to six months in different military and civilian prisons over such a ridiculous charge. And today I've come with Eddie Mufe, Eddie Sebat Mufe, as one of the victims who was held for six months, then tried by the military court. No, no, he died for you that These ones were charged with possession of bullets by the military court. That, the people who were forced to put on a military attire, they are the majority, but they are not here today. They are not here. Some of them have actually not been allowed to access the premises because they are a little bit more than this. Today we have over 100 supporters of NUP still stuck in different prisons being fried by military courts. Many of them have not even had an opportunity to be brought to court since they were arrested in 2020. You can imagine, Madam Chair, people who were arrested in 2020 up to now. Some of them have not been brought to the court. Now, the other issue is torture. Article 24 guarantees the freedom from torture, cruel and cruel treatment. Unfortunately, this has remained on paper as many Ugandans are subjected to horrendous incidents of torture and brutality. Almost all NUP supporters who have been arrested or abducted have been subjected to torture for damage to personal members. The forms of torture include waterboarding, electrocution, use of pliers or wires to plug all parts of, the bo of their bodies, beatings, denial of food and water, denial of sleep, hanging, use of boiling water to burn parts of the body, etc. <coughs> and if you had an opportunity to talk with Maseyeka, he tell you what he, has, he went through. There are hundreds of cases of torture that have been reported to us from reception. Even where cases have been filed, it has been very difficult for victims to get justice. Some of the victims of torture include our very president, Honorable Chakwani Sentamu, who was severely beaten, Honorable Francis Zake, and others. A detailed list of some of the, of the many torture victims can be availed once again in this committee so that the committee interacts with them and turn about recommendations that this committee interacts with these torture victims. Now, some of the outstanding cases this committee may want to interact with are one of Segawa Ronald, Masereka Samuel, Rumu Ronald, Kaoya Abdurahab, Nicholas Magezi, Luzike Masuki, Mutambuka Emmanuel, Yasin Gusurwa, Kasim Nigade, John, Sol Sel John, John Bosco Selum Kuma, Male Musa, Kuma Kajimur, Nedevi, ETC. These are some of the outstanding cases that uh, this committee uh, may manifest itself in. The nation show will shock the torture marks of suspects in the General Katumba Amara assassination attempt. The torture of suspects during interrogation seems to be the unwritten official policy of the government. I'm sorry to say this, but I found here a general representative saying that it's not their policy. But if the head of state, the commander in chief, comes out every day to say that this is not our policy, and yet the people he commands continue doing these actions for the benefit of his regime, then it seems to us that this is the unofficial policy of the government which is unfortunate. Several government officials have publicly condemned torture, and yet torture continues unabated, and the objective of most of the torture is regime perpetration. Of great concern to us is the injection, Madam Chairperson, of our people with unknown substances, either upon arrest or upon release. Our people, and uh, unfortunately, but Masaika was injected with substances, the Jima Moses was, at least from their reports, uh, when they took the name and many others. Then, upon abduction, they inject them with substances, which knock them out, and later on when they come out, they are again injected. Most of the victims, uh, I talked about, the long term of these substances is not yet known, and we hope that this committee can investigate what those substances are. For example, the gentleman I talked about, Surwa, has injected 
with the chemicals which you know rendered him, which put him in a vegetable state for most of the time and uh, uh, until he came out and uh, explained that he was my doctor. The other subject of concern are reports of ethnic profiling by security operatives. Capture person is an option. Many victims of abduction and torture have reported that they were being mocked and taunted on account of their ethnic origin. And this includes Honorable Zake, Usuru Ayasin, Kasim Mugadi, ETC. It is a very dangerous trend that would need to be fully investigated, but the state seems unwilling to do so. Number five, attack on the media. Article 29 of our constitution protects the freedom of the press and other media. Unfortunately, journalists have continued to be on the receiving end of state sponsored brutality. To that end, Ashraf Kassidi, a journalist, nearly lost his life when the police targeted him and shot him with a projectile on the 27th of December 2020 for doing his job. Before then, security authorities had brutalized him for covering the campaign fair of our presidential candidate. On February 17, 2021, when NUP leaders delivered, delivered a petition about human rights abuses, the UN Human Rights Officer in Colorado, military police descended on them and beat up at least 10 journalists, some of whom were hospitalized. And Honorable uh, Nyakodemi was equally brutalized on that day. To date, there has been no punishment for the real perpetrators and backlog of this crime, more so the commanders of the same operation. Who can the paper journalist Lawrence Chita Tower was recently assaulted? by the police for covering the protests against torture. On 10th March, nine journalists working the alternative PD, talk media and on 19 were abducted by security authorities, who were the officers, and these are just a few examples. Madam Chair, I want to go to the next subject of election malpractices. Despite the constitutional guarantees on the freedom of vote, the 2021 election saw some of the violent forms of election malpractices, denial of the right to vote for many Ugandans, and a general sense of intimidation. Many NUP police agents were arrested and tortured. Those who carried DRA forms were hunted down, beaten, and the DRA forms confiscated by security operatives. These violations were yet again on display during the recent by election in Kayunga. Uh, we have a copy of a book called Title, which we are going to submit by one of our diaspora leaders, which details some of the gross violations that took place during the election. Attack on our political party, NUP is a registered political party, but you recall that on 14th October 2020, a combined force of the police and military raided our offices without a search warrant and confiscated several items, including branding items, documents, and money. Immediately after elections, our office was yet again placed under siege for over a month and no one was allowed to access it. Several NUP, NUP officers, including one in Mira, Chimbula, Chika districts, and others, have been raided and closed, and some of the things confiscated include party registrars and, and, and party cards. Number eight, house arrest uh, of our party president, of our president. Despite courts of law outlawing the concept of house arrest, our president, Honorable Chagrin Senator Robert, has on several occasions been illegally put under house arrest, leading to the violation of his right to movement, privacy, livelihood, assembly, etc. Immediately after the 2021 election, the house arrest went on for over 10 days. Most recently, during the Kayunga by election, it was yet again placed under house arrest by the military. This is illegal and a violation of the human rights of individuals who are several times placed under house arrest. And courts have clearly outlawed this practice of placing people under house arrest. Because the laws of this country demand that people should be only held in gazetted places of detention. And this is not only about our party president, I know. The FDC team is here to give uh, the account, but you know, Madam Chair, that the FDC uh, former president, Dr. Vesti, has also been placed under house arrest a number of times, and other leaders. Denial of the freedom of assembly, Madam Chair, despite the constitutional guarantee of the right to freedom of assembly and association, Uganda continues to violate this right with impunity to an extent that every attempt to hold a peaceful protest by any group of people, except NRU supporters, will always be met with violence and brutality. The most recent groups to face the wrath of security forces are students from Makere University who are demonstrating against the continued closure of the university. A 23 year old biomedical student called Seuganda Richard had, had his hand smashed by tear gas canister when he returned to his home of residence, Numa Hall. Now, that gentleman is here. He has been at uh, the hospital. I don't know if you want to show your arm. Mm -hmm. 
maybe later. But he's, he, he lost his, his uh, right hand because when he returned to his uh, Hall of Presidents at Lumumba, he's, uh, he found a, a, a tear gas canister which smashed it. Same kind of Richard. He's uh, a vindicated lawyer. He's found it on his bed in, in the Hall of Presidents. And in many counties, Madame Chairperson, police and other agencies are no longer allowed to use explosives of that nature. Because he's not alone. There's another gentleman here, please stand up, who's, as you can see, he lost part of his hand because the tear gas canister passed on him, uh, on his, on his hand and smashed his fingers. Now, um, I mean, Madame Chairperson will wonder why. There is a constitution which says that we have freedom of assembly. And even yesterday, you saw uh, the, the women who were protesting about uh, the, the cost of living, who called their protest Kameza money. We are picked up by the military and, and taken in. So we wonder is there anything that the freedom of assembly is displayed to demonstrate in this country or not? And these are the questions that uh, this committee should interrogate. <coughs> Violation of the right to property, number 10. Hundreds of MEP supporters had their border borders confiscated by the police in the period leading up to the campaigns and in the aftermath of the January 2021 election. Some of these were simply confiscated for having pictures of the NUP presidential candidate or president as if this is a crime. Those who have been able to get their motorcycles back have had to cut with a lot of money in form of bribes to be able to get. So that is a violation of the right to property. Freedom of expression, the switching up off of the internet during elections was a violation of the constitutional guarantees to the freedom of expression, access to information, assembly ATC. The continued blocking of Facebook in Uganda is an extension of that violation. Conclusion. I have listed some categories of the most pressing violations of human rights in Uganda that have affected our people. This list is by no means conclusive or exhaustive, but it is only a highlight. There are some socio-economic rights that have been violated as a result of the attack on the civil and political rights. You notice that in my presentation I have mostly focused on the civil and political rights and not the social economic rights. For example, many children of political prisoners have been denied the right to education, the right to health care, ETC. We have come with the wife, Kalanzi, who was abducted in the night, tortured, and up to now is very very chitanya. That lady has kids. And every time she has to come to our office to request us for money for rent, money to take care of the kids, and that kind of thing, because the husband was abducted and taken away. So these are issues the committee needs to interrogate further, especially through interactions with the victims. Recommendation one, we recommend that the Human Rights Committee of Parliament is treated as other accountability committees, which are headed by the opposition in Parliament. Since most violations are committed at the behest and the blessing of the ruling party, interference in the work of this committee is very likely. The second issue is there is an urgent need to reform the manner in which members of the Uganda Human Rights Commission are appointed, Madam Chair. It has since been reduced into a lame duck body, seemingly unable and willing to confront the egregious forms of human rights. We can provide and we provided them the last time this committee with. Several complaints we made to the Human Rights Commission, Committee, yeah. the Human Rights Commission, the Human Rights Commission, and no step has been taken. Even if we scale this matter as much as far back as 2018. Of course, the courts of law have also talked about the issues there. Despite the existence of the Human Rights Enforcement Act, victims of human rights violations have largely not been able to access justice. One of the possibilities we are recommending is putting in place a human rights division in the High Court with specialized judges to deal with cases of human rights violations. Uh, Madam Chairperson, it is unfortunate that several of our judicial officer, officials do not really know how to handle human rights cases. For example, when these comrades were beaten up, tortured, and taken to prison, they were denied access to their lawyers, denied access to family members, denied access to doctors. But guess what? When we took this matter to court, the judge, in her wisdom, said that uh, she did not get evidence that uh, there should be medical reports. Now, if people have been tortured, not allowed to access doctors, not allowed to access family members or any other person, how do you say that they should give you 
And yet, this book, the same people are still under detention. How does the judicial official sit and say that evidence of pressure has not been produced? There must be another way. Number four, all political prisoners, Madam Chairperson and members, ought to be released urgently. And we demand that military trial of civilians is put to an end. Political prisoners in thousands who have been freed from different places of detention ought to be compensated because their livelihoods were affected by the long periods of detention. Madam Chair and members, NUP has ceased only being a political party headquarters. It's almost a relief agency where people come there and come for assistance. People were picked up during elections, you know, and other, at other times when they've been abducted and now they don't have any right. Number, uh, the other one, we challenge this committee to carry out public hearings and invite the victims of human rights violations who are in thousands. Madam Chair, we plead with you to create time and interact with the victims and we are able to, we are, we are willing to guide them before you. It is also important that this committee visits the different prisons across the country and interact with the political prisoners and get, get first hand accounts of the human rights violations occasioned on them. Finally, Madam Chair, the long term solution to ending human rights violations in this country is a political solution. As long as Uganda has a regime which must be able to keep itself in power, there will be no genuine respect for human rights. The discussion on transition preceded by free and fair elections comes in hand. I thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Madam Chair, the, the lawyers in this room know that uh, justice should not only be done, it should be seen to be done. It's not enough for top government officials to say it is not government policy for torture and other human rights violations to happen for David and that kind of thing. But no action is taken. No serious action gets to be taken. Nobody is brought to justice for these violations. And yet they admit it happens they condemn it for happening, and then they say it is a few elements that are doing this. But why are those few elements not brought to justice, not called to order, if it is not government policy? Can we begin to see the perpetrators of this torture and other human rights violations brought to justice? It's very important, Madam Chair. And Madam Chair, we, it's instructive for us to note that uh, it can be anyone. We are here as a national unity platform, Ali Rome was the Saturday, you can see our colleagues from FDC are coming after us. It can be anybody. And it's important for all of us not to look at it through the lenses of political parties. There's a gentleman called Zebra Mando Senyange. She was killed, a big tragic, in cold blood. And Mr. Museveni admitted as such on TV. This gentleman was an NRA mobilizer, was not an NUP supporter. And was killed in cold blood, and to date, not a single person has been brought to justice. The victims of the November 18th and 19th massacre, as we think of it, they could have been supporters of anybody else, you know, because you find this lady who was taking food to her customers, she was killed. There were very disturbing images of a young lady who was in one of the buildings recording with her phone military officers who are going about the streets. And one turned his gun at her and shot. Luckily for her, the bullet only caught the wind. She survived. She is a citizen. She could have been anyone's supporter or whatever the case might be. So when action is not taken against these ones that we are calling errors, it will continue to happen because if somebody does it and no action is taken, tomorrow,